Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Got a quick pro tip for you today. This is something you absolutely should be putting inside your bug out bag. It's very small and it's very powerful. So let's get to it. All right, so I've talked about this in the past in a couple of my earlier videos on the channel many years ago. And I wanna reiterate the point because this is a very powerful supplement to put inside your bug out bag. Now, whether or not you're a coffee drinker right now, doesn't matter. Putting caffeine pills in your bug out bag is a very smart move. There's a lot of benefits to doing so. It's very lightweight and it doesn't take up almost any space. And for what it does, for something so small to have such a powerful effect, it's silly not to just put it in there because you just never know. There's many situations where you might need to move a little faster in the short term. There's many situations where you might have to stay awake either for security purposes or maybe you are waiting to be rescued and you don't want to miss a helicopter flyover or something to that effect. There's a lot of reasons why you should have caffeine pills in your bug out bag. Now I know some people say oh, caffeine has no effect on me. I'm not really too sure about the neuroscience with regards to caffeine but I know that there is a small portion of the population who have what are called impulse hyperactivity disorders where the effects of caffeine are not necessarily the same for those individuals, people with attention deficit hyperactive disorder. Stimulants don't have the same effect as they do on other people. That said, that's a very small, small percentage of the population. There's so many reasons why you would want to carry caffeine in your bug out bag. For one, it works for most people. It's going to excite your nervous system for the short term. It's going to help you stay awake. It's going to increase alertness. It's going to minimize fatigue and it's just going to allow you to perform better. Now there's gonna be a bit of a caffeine crash, but if you're just talking about evading an immediate threat, having to push through 10 miles of bush, maybe you're being pursued, it certainly is a performance enhancing substance in the short term. Now, of course, there's some long-term negative side effects. There's some drawbacks to using caffeine, but to not have it in your bug out bag, if you ask me, it's just silly. Yes, it's synthetic, it's not natural, it's naturally occurring, in some forms but for the most part in a concentrated form and it's often found 200 milligram form which is two to three cups of coffee in one tiny little pill now you can break that in half if you have a high sensitivity to caffeine now a person like me who drinks a lot of coffee i have a high tolerance to caffeine i can easily easily handle 200 milligrams of caffeine uh, contrary to popular belief uh, detoxing from caffeine is not going to be that serious. It's not going to be like detoxing from cocaine or crystal meth or the other stimulants like that. It's a very minor, mild stimulant. So all of the talk about, oh, you better stop drinking coffee now because if the collapse comes and you don't have coffee, you're not going to be able to function. To some extent, your performance might be reduced a little bit. But this is another potential hedge against that as well in that if you don't have coffee, at least you're going to have the drug which coffee provides you. Not only that, if you have somebody in your group who's weak, who's fatigued, maybe they just need a little bit of pep, maybe providing them with one of these just for the short term is going to give them that little bit of oomph they need to get out of Dodge, to get to the bug out location, wherever you need to go, this is going to help you get there. Now, obviously, as a mental health and addictions counselor, I would encourage you to use these substances as needed and not form a chemical dependency on them. And caffeine, unfortunately, is probably one of the things I am dependent on. Although with caffeine, because it's such a mild substance, I don't like to use the word dependent. If I had to tomorrow, I could easily quit drinking coffee. The withdrawal effects of detoxing from caffeine aren't really that severe. They're not really that noticeable. What most people get addicted to with coffee is the ritualistic aspect. Now, if you're a person who needed the ritualistic aspect of drinking something which it was warm then of course you can get some of these instant coffee mixes uh, i stole this idea from the urban prepper i'm going to be putting this in the bug out roll video that i'm going to have coming out soon now there's a lot of pre-workout supplements on the market that contain a variety of other stimulants caffeine is not the only stimulant but by and large it's the most effective one and it really is the active ingredient in most of those pre-workout stimulants and most fat burgers 
There's no such thing as a fat burner, just for the record. It, the main ingredient in that is caffeine, and caffeine gives you more energy, so you end up expending more energy, and in doing so, it makes you think that you're losing more weight, when the reality is it just gives you more energy, which is causing you to move more. Now, you can get those five-hour energy shots. They contain vitamin B and some other stimulants. Really, if you want to pair a vitamin B complex with your caffeine pills, that's going to give you the exact same effect and it's going to be much, much cheaper. I think a container of these for 100 tablets is about eight bucks. 100 tablets, that's about two to 300 cups of coffee for eight bucks. I mean, you can't beat it. Now, what I've done is I've packaged them in Mylar, which is a non-porous substance, good for storing pretty much anything in if you don't want oxygen to degrade the substance over time. You can just keep it in its original bottle, but you might not want to bring that much. A scenario which would warrant you to need 100 caffeine pills would have to be pretty intense, and I'm not saying that couldn't happen. It's just probably unlikely, and you're probably just as well to pack even four or five little pills, just in case. Heaven forbid you ever have to use them, but you might find yourself in a situation in which you do. There's also one more substance I should add, and it's called ephedrine. Now, legally, it can't be marketed to be taken as a supplement. They have to market it under different guises. Now, it's illegal to market it as such in Canada, but I don't actually know if it's legal in the United States. It's getting pretty close to a hardcore stimulant when you start getting into the pseudoephedrine type stuff because that is the base ingredient in crystal meth. Although crystal meth has a lot of other dirty chemicals in it, which really do take it to the level of being a super drug. And that's certainly stuff you don't want to do. I'm going to do a video just on crystal meth because I do believe that that's going to be a very problematic substance if there ever was a collapse scenario. Not only the people who are addicted to it and out there trying to rob, steal, whatever to get their fix, uh, but what people are going to do when they're on it, of course, because it creates a drug-induced psychosis. But also, if you're withdrawing from it, it's going to cause a lot of fatigue. Something like this can help you get through stimulant withdrawal. It's, it's going to help mitigate the acute withdrawal symptoms of that. Now, I don't know how this stuff is going to interact with other drugs. I cannot give you medical advice. I probably should have said this at the start of the video. You're definitely going to want to consult with a physician. Uh, just to see if this is an optimal thing for you. But remember, in a clop scenario, there's not going to be any physicians. And by and large, caffeine is a pretty harmless drug for the most part. But if you are on other pharmaceutical drugs or psychopharmaceutical drugs, it may actually have some iatrogenic or negative effects. So you're going to want to do your own research about that. But you know what? It can't go wrong because chances are somebody in your party is going to benefit from having this in there. It's a no-brainer. Throw it in your bug out bag. Thanks for watching. Canadian Prepper Out. Oh yeah, and P.S. You can get yourself a bug out roll through the link in the description. Right now, we're shipping out usually within two weeks. I was able to catch up on all of the initial orders. I probably only have about a half dozen orders or so lingering. Right now, we're looking at about a two-week uh, shipping time overall lead time about three to four weeks maximum absolute maximum usually once they ship out if you're in the United States or Canada it's in your possession within a week of being shipped so support the channel get one of those below thanks for watching Canadian Prepper out